Somebody is going through something right now. Sickness in your body. You've lost your job. You've lost your home. You've lost your car. You've lost your marriage. You've lost your kids. The economy has affected you and your family. My friend, you need a breakthrough. Hello, and welcome to It's Time for a Breakthrough, the outreach ministry of the House of Faith, Church of God in Christ, the house where faith manifests change with our pastor, Ola Mac A. Harris, Jr. Our church is located at 2934 Lowell Avenue. That's 2934 Lowell Avenue, here on the west side of Jacksonville, where the telephone number is 904-388-7428. That's 904-388-7428. We invite you to come and worship with us. Our Sunday school begins at 9.30 a.m., followed by morning worship at 11 o'clock a.m. Wednesday night and Friday night service both begin at 7.30 p.m. Well, it's time for a breakthrough. Prepare your hearts and minds to receive a word from the Lord. Good morning, Radio World. Thank God for Jesus Christ. No other greater one than Jesus Christ. The heart of the king is in his hand. Like the rivers of water, he turneth it whichever way he wants. Thank God for the Holy Ghost this morning. We're going to have a quick word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for you let us live this morning. You let us get up clothed and in our right mind. And then, Lord, you let us have a chance at the tree of life, at eternal life, a chance to see your face in peace and God the Father's face in peace, a chance to have our name written in the Lamb Book of Life. Ain't nobody like you nowhere. God, you can do anything but fail. God, we're coming to you this morning for a mighty breakthrough. We're coming to you this morning, God, and begging you to help us, Lord, to expect a miracle and expect a mighty breakthrough, God, and expect, help us, Lord, to have patience and faith to wait on all of your great promises, Lord. Help us, God, to avoid the promises that bring your wrath down on us and the anger from you on us, God. We thank you for our families. We thank you for all the great and wonderful things that you have done. We thank you for the great and wonderful things that you will do. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to talk again this morning on the promises of God. We're going to go over uh, one of the promises that we talked on last week was uh the, the, the better promises, the promises that everybody wants. And then we're going to talk a little this morning on the promises that we don't want falling on our doorsteps. That's the promises God that, that make to us for his wrath coming down on us. Last week we talked at uh, Second Peter, the, uh, the first chapter, verse 4, and it's, reads, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. These promises, we want to have God nature. We want to have God living in us and letting his word live in us. God, the Bible say his word is alive. And we want his word living in us. And we want to uh, accept, uh, be in a position that we can uh, accept the promises, the good promises of God. But we got to avoid those, all of the, the bad promises that God got for the bad people that just don't want to live right. Now, no matter how bad the world look, no matter how bad things look, uh, we still got to realize that God, that God, that God is, is, is everything we got to do is avoid the things that's bad that God got set up for the bad people. Second Corinthians, the 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 seventh 
chapter, verse 1, having therefore these promises, dear beloved, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, perfected, completing everything, our life complete across the board. We got to line up and grow up and give up to God. We got to line up the God way. We got to grow up and mature. We always at the same spot doing the same things and we going to get the same results. But uh, the, the sixth chapter of 2 Corinthians uh, starting with verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness and what concord has Christ with Belial or what part has he that believeth with an infidel and what agreement has the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God as God has said I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. That's a, another great promise, but it come with those uh, you got to do exactly what he said. You can't run around with the world and then try to come and get in God's bosom. You can't be loving the world. He said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. A lot of times we just don't want to let the things of the world go. And the, the, the main way we could do this, the best way to do this is to confess what's in you. Let God know, identify it. I, I found myself this morning, I started thinking about uh, as we as little kids and how that we would run up in, in the living room and tell our mama who did this and who did that. Well, we got to be that way in, in life now. We got to be that way in the spirit. When you see things, identify them. The Holy Ghost already know they are. He allow you to see them and me to see them so that they can come out of you. But don't try to justify them yourself. Don't try to make excuses. This is what I'm going to be the next thing I'm going to go to is we make excuses. People hate to go to church now. They hate to go to Bible study now. We always got a way of trying to get out of the church, uh, putting the pastors down. They all they want is money. And and putting the, uh, the, the things we supposed to do is always a justification now. But the things that we ain't got no business hole to, we always trying to justify why we should be doing those things. So we is no justification in nobody but the Holy Ghost. That's the only just true justification. He is the one justify us. He is the one clean us up. And when He show us what's in us, we got to let it go. L I G, let it go. It's not hard to let things go. When you start getting used to letting things go, it it easier and easier and easier. And the thing about it, you get stronger and stronger. He, you you get your hands get cleaner. You don't mind going before God when you get when your hands getting cleaner. We got to repent. Repent is not a one time thing. We got to repent all day long. You got to cry out to God. Please, God, let me see myself. Open it up to me, God. Let me let me see you, Jesus Christ. Let me see your mighty power and your mighty strength. God want us to do it. God want us to go to church. God want us to take our church to church. The Sabbath is the main day in our life. That's the main day in our life. That's when we can get quiet and really hear God. That's what that's what it's for. That's what the day is for. But you got to go to Bible study too. You got to go to Wednesday night or Tuesday night or whatever way you congregate. You got to go to Bible study. You don't need to be going there on Sunday. You sitting up there. You don't know what the preacher talk about. He can tell you anything because you won't go to church. You you won't take your children to Bible study. Now, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how bad it looks, 
God said, I got thousands who has not bowed a knee to Satan. So everybody ain't wrong. And I'm not talking about the ones that have not bowed a knee to Satan. I'm talking about the ones that won't take little Timmy to church on Sunday saying little Timmy don't have no tennis shoes or he don't have no dress shoes. But yet, if a Martha down the street having a birthday party on Sunday for a little one-year-old baby who don't know nothing about life, no, huh? Daddy, is you gonna find a way to get little Timmy something to go down there to that party, but you can't get Get your little babies ready and have them go to school. And no, don't put them on the bus. You go with them. One thing about a child, when a child see his mama or his daddy in church, that encourage them. That make them think that's what they supposed to be doing. Anything you do in front of a child, that's what they think they supposed to be doing. Then he says, for sake to suffer not the little church. Suffer the little church to come unto me and forbid them not. For such is the kingdom of God. We got to get the church back in the church we got to get back in the church they all stop it, 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 they're just taking over the school and we say it because they ain't tough they tough prayer out of school but that ain't what it is you know tough prayer out the house if you get prayer in the house you the prayer will go to the school with them we got to get it right we got to go back to the church we got to stay in the church and the church got to pray it got, got to get away from the just professional church going just going to church to be going to church you don't want to be doing that. We got to bow down to God. We need to go to church and talk about the Holy Ghost. We need to go to church and talk about God's word. We need to go to church and talk about fasting. We need to go to church and stop and talk about prayer. The things that mean something to God, but that going to get us connected to God and going to keep us bowed down to God. We got to bow down to God. We got to line up the God way or the highway. It ain't going to be our way. We can't do it. God the one created us. He the one breathed the breath of life into our nostrils and we got to let it go. We got to let it go and let God. God is able to do anything but fail. Ain't nothing too hard for God. But we continually want to do it our way. We can't find a way to make it to church. But Saturday nights, and yes, I'm talking to y'all young ladies. You know the ones I'm talking to. Saturday nights, you're going to always find a way to get out there and do whatever you want to do. Then you're too tired to get up and get them children ready on Sunday morning. I'm really talking about the church this morning, but I started off talking about the promises of God because, yes, God made promises to us. He made all of us want to make promises to our children. We love our children. We want to make promises to our children, but in the back room, we keep a belt because we got to let them understand that the belt coming when you don't do right, just like I promise you the good thing. We got to get ready. Get ready on Saturday night. Pick you another night to go out and party. Pick Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. It's going to be the same people out there doing the same thing. They're just going to be doing it a little less. But you choose not to go out. You choose to be home and get your children ready. If you can't do nothing but shine their shoes, they self, you do it. Get their shirt ready. Just like you do when you get ready to go down the street for a little old party, for a little one-year-old baby who don't even know y'all there in the heart. Get ready and go to God and bow down to God. God to change the things in the school. No, stop talking about the prayer out of the school. The prayer out of the home. That's where the problem is at. The prayer out the home. Bring the prayer back to home. Bring the Holy Ghost back to the home. Stop chasing after the world. It's hard because there's so many things that the devil got out there. But ain't nothing too hard for Jesus. It's hard for you. Yes, but the Holy Ghost can do anything but fail. He got the devil under his feet. He burning him up right now. He is lost. The, the victory is in Jesus Christ. Turn your heart back to Jesus. Turn your heart back to the church. Turn your heart back to the Bible. Turn your heart back to prayer. God will do these things. He will give us these promises. But you don't want to run into God bad promises. I don't want to do it. You didn't want to run into Mama Belt. You wanted to do whatever Mama told you to stay away from that belt. Wait for the can. Don't wait for the belt. You got a chance. Thank God for Jesus. Lord, we, we still in our uh, uh, tent revival. We've been having fun every night. I want to spend a, a special shout out to my pastor's mother in Texas. I didn't, I didn't remember to shout out to you, but we all love you. and You've been on our minds and all the, the people there. His love is with y'all. 
So, y'all, we thank God for Jesus. Ain't nobody like Jesus. We thank God for the Holy Ghost. God done gave us a chair. We got to step out on it. We got to step out on it. Stop looking for a way to blame the church. If the church is for the believers, the one that done accepted Jesus in their heart, thank you, God, for Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for listening to It's Time for a Breakthrough. We praise God for your breakthrough, and we would love to hear from you. So please feel free to write us, send prayer requests, praise reports, or donations to the House of Faith, Church of God in Christ, 2934 Lowell Avenue, Jacksonville, Florida, 32254, or email us at elderlhol at gmail.com. That's E L D E R L H O L at gmail.com. Have a blessed day in the Lord.